I want to get onto the topic of what owners say and whether or not they regret what they say. Might what they say come back to haunt them? Um, Evangelist Maranakis, uh, the Greek sh- shipping ca- tycoon, which is not easy to say at this time in the morning or at any time, um, he said a few things earlier in the week about his hopes for Nottingham Forest. Yep. He says, our vision is clear and unwavering. We are on a path to re-establish Nottingham Forest as a dominant force in English football. And he goes on to say that hopefully because of what they're invested, it will end up with Forest achieving and being hugely successful. Funnily enough, just the other day, in conversation with Forest captain Joe Worrell, I put that to him and I said, what do you make of your owner's comments? You only have to look at what Brian Clough and Peter Taylor did all those years ago with a shoestring budget. Forgetting, obviously, we signed the first million pound player in Trevor Francis, but but now I think definitely this this season and the way that the owners so ambitious and speak so highly of of the manager and and the football club, and he really understands the identity that the city has and and the people connected with the club. Why not? The sky's the limit. He's had unbelievable success with Olympiacos over the seasons. He's uh, been in charge there. And especially with Forrest, so far, every single year that he's been in charge, there's been a steady graduation of of improvement and of um, togetherness for the city. It's such a good time to be a Forrest fan, and, and especially I'm very lucky to be to be a player. So that was Joe Worrell. Now, we have been here with Evangelist Maranakis in the past yes. because when they secured uh, um, Premier League football after winning the Championship <clears throat> Playoff final at Wembley, I somehow managed to get in a suite with him and I somehow managed to get a microphone in front of him and somehow managed to try and keep up with him as he bounced from wall to wall saying, this is it. Our path now is a hugely ambitious one. It's a magic moment. We are back. And now we go for trophies. Did you think it was an impossible dream when Steve Cooper arrived? Nothing is impossible for me. If you see what I have done in my life, you see that nothing is impossible. So what can Nottingham Forest do now that they are back? What do you think? You have to be patient and see, but uh, be ready for trophies. Be ready for trophies. Nothing is impossible. Funnily enough, he's not the first to say something like that because after their Carabao Cup final defeat to Manchester United, Newcastle's uh, director, Amanda Staveley, promised big things. Do you know, I was so proud of all of the fans, everybody, and I was crying and my little, my son was crying, we're all crying. But what was amazing, at 2-0 down, we were flags going, but the passion and everybody, we, uh, everybody's taken us on this journey. We will get, we will win the Carabao Cup, we will win the FA Cup, we will win the Champions League and we will win the Premier League. But we really, it, this is all about, you know, the, the amazing fans that have taken us on this journey. And we're just honoured and humbled and feel very privileged to um, help run Newcastle United. Yeah, that was that. Nice to speak to you. Uh, And just remember, we're going to win the lot. Mm -hmm. And do you remember in this very studio, further down the pyramid when he came in, the then owner of Charlton Athletic, Thomas Sandgard, sat there and said this. Not only can, can we say that nobody's messing with Charlton anymore, but Charlton is also going to be a force to be reckoned with. And we have a plan to obviously do everything we possibly can with the first team to get promoted this year. And I'm already putting the pieces in place so that we will be Premier League ready once the time comes. So hopefully, let's say in four, five years, maybe six years, we'll be in a position to to get into the Premier League. We won't be. It's my goal that we won't be an elevator club. We'll be a, a, a club that really seriously belong in the Premier League Maybe we'll either expand the top seven to a top eight. We are heading to the Premier League. That was Thomas Sandgard. He actually headed back home to North America. Sure. Um, how do you find the balance between being publicly ambitious and tempering expectation with a degree of realism? After what you've heard there, well, I think is it not a case of everybody calm down a bit? Well, I think it's all about balance. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with what Maranakis has said. The difference between... I mean, you, you will recall that um, when um, the Charlton guy was in the room and he left, and I said to him, he's going to struggle. I'm not entirely sure he knows what he's bitten off because he didn't want to do what it took to make Charlton successful. Maranakis does want to do what it might take to make Nottingham Forest successful. The difference between Maranakis um, 
and the guy that owned Charlton, what's his Sango. name? Sango. Sangard. Thomas Sangard. <laughs> Um, is that he continues to pump money into this football club at ridiculous rates to be able to achieve the outcomes he wants, and Thomas didn't have the appetite for that. Nothing wrong with that. There's a slight difference between Maranakis and Newcastle because it's not Amanda Stapley's money. So we, I would imagine that the Saudis have the appetite to do precisely what she's advocating for. I don't think it's particularly wise to have said what she's said, but notwithstanding that, it's a call to action. There's actually more balance in Maranakis' statement than we would give it credit to. Nothing is impossible. It's nothing is impossible. I mean, he's, he, he didn't say nothing impossible. Nothing is impossible to him. So I think it's a bit self aggrandizing what he said there. But notwithstanding that, he's suggesting, and he's going to have to write the checks out to be able to back up that, that braggadocy. Nothing wrong with it. Um, when I bought Palace, the first thing I said was, you know, I'm going to put this club back in the Premier League in five years. And most people said, you shouldn't have said that. I did it in four. Um, and I also said, when we got relegated from the Premier League, which caused much irritation among certain parts of the football mafia about my observations that we got relegated the following year I think we should win the league well you know I maintained I didn't sell on my best players Andrew Johnson was kept despite the fact everyone in football said to me you're going to lose an England international so I made those statements because I felt they were right to make it was a call to action it was a mission statement it was basically concentrating the minds of those that were going to deliver my wishes that here you are you've been given all the tools so now with those tools I expect you to deliver outcomes it's a balance isn't it you want your supporters to see your vision you want to see the clarity of it. Maranakis hasn't turned around and said what he's going to win and when he's going to win it. <laughs> no. right? He said, Good point. we are going to be a dominant force in English football. Fine, OK. No reason to disbelieve him because he's backed everything that he's done previously. Whether you're Martin O'Neill sits across the table doesn't like him because he wasn't given a fair shake in his mind. But the reality of it is, is that Nottingham Forest are in the Premier League. He spent a king's ransom on footballers last year. To the point where most people said he spent too much money and bought too many players in. So is I, he being realistic? Well, why not? Why not? He, you know, depends what dominant force means. D does it mean a highly competitive side in the league? Or does it mean dominating the league? Because that's going to be a very tall order to be able to surpass Manchester City. So is it not a case of uh, calm down evangelists? Well, I think a little Mind bit. Mind you, nothing would have but, calmed him down. Well, look, I, think, I think, but he's, But the thing is, this is the, 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 what he said at the, after the player final was an emotional reaction yeah. to the euphoria of achieving something that Nottingham Forest fans had waited for the best part of a quarter of a century for. What he's saying now is, is not in the heat of emotion is actually what he thinks he wants to impart rather we're, than what his emotions dictate that he should. We're on a path to re-establish Forrest as a dominant force in English football. Well, there you are. So and that's he, okay. Well, no, I don't I think I think that actually I can par I can give him a pass for suggesting that he's going to win trophies on the back of a euphoria driven moment after after all that you've seen you've been to playoff finals I've been part of them. I know the ex, you know the exuberance that you feel. You see it, right? But this is a statement said in the cold light of day where he's clearly saying to the world, without all the emotion around him, maybe it was said post, you know, staying in the Premier League. If, uh, if maybe it wasn't. Maybe he just said it recently. Mm. But it says a dominant force in English football. Well, a dominant force infers that they're going to be at the very top of the pile, and that means you've got some heavy, heavy lifting to do and some significant clubs yeah. to eclipse. Yeah. And I can't quite price that into my thinking, but the man's got wealth. True. And if he wants True. to put that wealth behind Nottingham yeah. Forest and give them an opportunity, who are we to categorise it as inappropriate observations? Because people should work under pressure. People should work under expectations. Why is it that only, only, only seemingly football people get a pass? Realistic expectation, though. Keep it realistic, shoot. surely. Yeah, listen, you shoot for the stars, you take the moon on the way up. You know, there's a bottom line behind having an ambition and you've got to back it up. Mm. Now, he will, he, he will either eat these words or he'll thrive and survive as a result of them because he's going to have to put the collateral behind it and if he believes he's going to do that yeah then why shouldn't we be 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 of the mind that nottingham forest could be quite significant the example that he makes that that joe worrell makes who's a, a again a fine young man that spoke very well and that's why he's the captain of the football club or brian clough and peter taylor steers towards a narrative that i said earlier on about manchester united because mm. it wasn't the manchester nottingham forest directors that built nottingham forest into yeah. a title winning side or the european champions it was brian clough and peter taylor yeah in this instance it's 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 a difficult one to see for okay us, but hey okay we shall see we'll keep across it jim white and simon jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.